By 2050, over 200 million people could be displaced due to climate-related factors. That number is bigger than most countries. Today, I'm talking about climate change and the new wave of refugees it's creating. Not tomorrow, now. Here's the deal. Climate doesn't wait for politics. It floods towns, dries up fields, turns homes into memories. When water disappears, when food disappears, when safety disappears, people move. That's not a choice. It's survival. This isn't new. For decades, droughts, storms, and rising seas have nudged migration. But the scale is changing fast. Think of recent years, record-breaking heat waves, massive wildfires, floods that swallowed cities. In 2022, Pakistan's floods displaced more than 8 million people. That's one disaster, one season. So where is climate pushing people today? South Asia, heat stress and monsoon chaos are forcing rural families into crowded cities. Sub-Saharan Africa and the Sahel Droughts and shifting rainfall hit farmers and herders, fueling conflict and movement across borders. The Horn of Africa. Back-to-back -back droughts, then devastating floods, have uprooted millions. The Pacific Islands. Sea level rise is salting farmland and swallowing shorelines. Some communities are planning relocations now. Central America's dry corridor crop failures push people north when fields stop producing. Even wealthy countries aren't spared. Wildfires and storms are displacing communities from California to the Mediterranean. Specific events matter. A single cyclone can create hundreds of thousands of internal migrants overnight. Months of failed rains can empty villages quietly, one family at a time. Here's what experts say. Climate change is a threat multiplier. It makes poverty, conflict, and weak infrastructure worse. The World Bank estimates up to 216 million internal climate migrants by 2050 if we don't act. What does this mean long term? Politics. Expect tougher border debates, new visa categories, and pressure on cities already stretched thin. Economies. Some regions will lose workers and harvests. Others will gain labor and innovation if they invest in housing, transit, and jobs. Humanitarian work more frequent, longer emergencies, bigger funding gaps, a shift from reacting to planning relocations with dignity. Listen to the people moving. I didn't want to leave. The river took our house, says a father in Mozambique after a cyclone. Our fields died. The city was our only choice, shares a mother from Central America's dry corridor. These stories aren't statistics. They're families. So what do we do? Cut emissions fast. Invest in resilience, early warning systems, flood defenses, drought-resistant crops, create legal pathways for people who must move, support communities that choose to stay and protect those who can't. To wrap this up, climate change is already reshaping where people live. The question isn't if migration will grow, it's whether we handle it with panic or with planning, resources, and compassion. Tell me what you think. Should countries create climate visas? What does a fair plan look like? Drop your thoughts in the comments. And if you want more on solutions, from relocation done right to cities that welcome newcomers, watch the next video on my channel. See you there.